Jay Sox. Wiki. Steam Deck. Wiki Wiki. Last year, Jay Sox released the backplate in a variety of translucent colors. They looked fantastic, were even practical as they gave us better back buttons and even cooled down our Steam Deck. In today's review, we'll check out the new Jay Sox RGB line a backplate and a docking station. Is it all just pretty lights? Or did Jay Sox make something worthwhile? Welcome back to Team Pandori. Subscribe. So I got this package from JSUX in purpose for a video review. And honestly, I'm not an RGB guy. Either way, let's get on with it. So all the features here seem to be the same as the previous transparent backplate, just with the addition of RGB. And here's the back of the box for you all to see. So inside, we have this box, and underneath, the backplate. The manual is in English and Chinese, and this has not been updated for this new version. Saying that, installation is the same as the last backplate, and no one reads these anyway. We get the extra choice of back buttons, and a bag of tools. There's some screws here, a very nice looking screwdriver, and some prying tools. It's like a guitar pick and a stick. Oh, we get the lovely finger gloves. Uh, not these again. Got a USB-C cable to charge the battery with. And here's the main event. Uh, first impressions, this looks pretty bad. <laughs> so at the top we've got this RGB circuitry, but what were they thinking with these rubber handles? Oh, I don't know. But let's focus back on the backplate. So these vents seem to be a little larger. There's a new vent here, USB-C port to charge up the RGB light, and I've seen this button turns it on. If we put it next to the older model, we can see the differences. A vent here, slightly larger vents here, and a new design for the heatsink. As there have been numerous changes, we'll first see the performance of the previous backplate. As we pass the finish line, around 65 degrees Celsius. And checking the heatsink on the back, it is too hot to touch. Ow! 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 Let's bring on the new backplate. So the back buttons are very similar to a stock Steam Deck. It's not a bad thing, but changing these for the race set helps a ton when playing games. So these are the buttons I preferred. And to switch them in, it's very straightforward. Just undo some screws, lift up your RGB light, then replace the buttons. And that is looking much better. To install, we need to first remove the backplate. Make sure it was shut down and then remove the micro SD. Using the included screwdriver, remove the eight screws from the back of the shell. Just remember not to strip the screws and righty tighty, lefty loosey. Now that the screws are removed, we can pry the case open. We can either use a stick or the guitar pick that was also included. Just get it in there and slide it down. Do this around the whole case, and eventually we'll two jiggle it apart. So it's recommended to preheat this area with a hairdryer, but we'll take our chances and do nothing but remove this plastic. To install, make sure the cable fits in the hole here, and just push it together. Go around the whole case so that all clips are in, and then finally, give it a good screw. So it does actually feel rather light, and the circle of vent at the back is off-center. Don't know if there's a reason for this, but it just looks a bit odd. And this button does... ooh! Pushing it again changes the color. We got red, green, blue, purple, red again, and Blackpool Illuminations. Holding the button in turns it off completely. But rather than looking at the lights directly, it looks much better when reflected off an object, and even better in the dark. Getting back to the rubber cover, its off-white colour detracts from the sleek look of the Steam Deck. It feels okay, and probably protects it somewhat, but if it was black, it'd look so much better. In a way, it reminds me of the Wiimote covers. If you intend on only using the analog sticks and the triggers, then it'd be okay. But as it gets in the way of the D-pad and front-facing buttons, we're really not a fan of this inclusion. Off you go. So let's pop the micro SD card back in, and test out grid.
At the end of the race, 58 degrees Celsius. That's a 7 degree improvement from the last model. Now if we put our hand over the heatsink, it's certainly warm, but you're not going to burn your fingers on this. Actually the whole back plate is noticeably cooler. Let's take a look at the dock. This is the 18-in-1 RGB docking station, and inside we get this plastic bag of plastic. If we pull up this strap, there's some more bits inside, like this user guide. But this little paper here is probably much more useful. It shows us the ports and something else. A USB-C to USB-C cable. A sticker. And the RGB dock. It actually looks quite nice, very compact. And I think we know where the sticker goes. Boop. If we push this, it does open slightly, but not all the way. As we need to pull it out, it feels a bit cheap, but we can use this as a steam deck stand. Looking around it, we've got a USB 2 port, USB-C for power, two USB 3s, one gigabit Ethernet LAN, a HDMI port, this one's good for 4K at 60Hz or 2K at 120Hz, and lastly, two USB-C ports. Nothing over here or underneath. Let's give it some juice. You can use the Steam Deck or the one from JSOX and ooh. And as the top of the dock is flat, we just pop it down like this. We have noticed one problem though. The angled USB cable gets in the way of either the power button or the air vents. And if you wanted to use a stand, it seems much more like an afterthought. And with the docks hooked up to the telly, we can actually play some games. And if you get fed up with the flashy lights, you can always turn it off. Or turn it back on again. I think it's about time for the pros and the cons. We'll first start with the dock. It's very pretty with its lights, has a nice amount of I.O. And it shows us a new, interesting way to store our Steam Deck. Unfortunately, the pop-out stand feels cheap. The angled USB-C cable covers major parts of the Steam Deck, and the dock gets warm even when the Steam Deck is unplugged. As for the RGB backplate, it is a solid improvement over last year's model. It still has the upgraded buttons and is easy to install, but now with lower temperatures and pretty lights. As for the cons, the misaligned vent fan may be a turn off for some, we don't know what they were thinking with the rubber grips. If you're looking for a solid upgrade for your Steam Deck, the JSOX backplate is definitely recommended. And if you like RGB lighting, you can get some of that too. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra!